Pi R squared. Good. So that should be either familiar or vaguely familiar. Sometime in middle school, maybe high school, you saw area of a circle. It'll be pi r squared. So what we're going to do is look at area of a circle, but we're going to look at a slice of a circle. So if you know how big a piece of pizza is, how much area does that piece uh, have? So let's pretend that's a circle. And let's say I want to know. So this is the angle I'm using here, theta. I want to know how much area is in this shape right here. So we know total area is pi r squared. All we need to do is figure out how much, what percentage of the circle is shaded in. So we can take our angle measurement, and if we divide it by 2 pi, that'll be the uh, proportion of the, of the circle that we're using. So this looks to be about one third of a rotation, approximately. So if I divide by a full rotation, what I will get is the percentage of a circle that we're looking at. So what I'm going to do, so we have theta divided by 2 pi. So this is the proportion of a full rotation that we're using right here. So a full rotation is 2 pi. So if I write that out, this is our angle divided by one rotation. So this will tell us what amount of a full rotation we're working with. So it looks like what I shaded in is about a third. So I should get a third of the area of a full circle if I did this area. And all you do is area equals is pi r squared. But then all you have to do is multiply by this fraction pi uh, theta over 2 pi. So this is the area of uh, a sector. And our sector we're talking about is the one right there. So we have some angle theta, and this is going to be the area. If you want to go in degrees, if you're measuring in degrees instead of radians, so this is a radian, uh, a radian area right here. So this is in when you're measuring in radians. How do you think this changes for degrees? That's it. You just take out 2 pi and put in 360. So we still want to know how much of a rotation. So rotation will be 360 in degrees. So we have pi r squared angle over 360. So this is if you're in degrees. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this looks like probably <coughs> 2 pi over 3. I say 2 pi over 3 because 3 pi over 3 is a half a rotation. And that looks to be about not quite a half rotation. So a little less than pi. Okay. We'll get much better at estimating what angles are in radians when we move forward. So now we're going to go to uh, the next section, which is trig functions. So that's the end of 10 that is the end of 10.1. That didn't work so well. Trig function. All right, good enough. I'll just handwrite the name here, and then I'll come back later. Ten point two trig trig functions in the unit circle.
All right, so first of all, trig is short for trigonometry. All right, and I'm not going to write trigonometry out lots of times, so there it is, trigonometry. Um, so what word does this come from? Basically, this is measurements of a triangle. So try three. Uh, metry is usually referring to measurements. So this is all about measurements of triangles. So uh, that's trig. Functions you learned last quarter. There's only one rule to be a function. Anybody remember the one rule? Yep. So, so for each input, there is one output. So every single input has an output. They don't have to be unique. But we'll see when we invert functions that we'll need that property later. But for each input, there is one output. Not two, not zero, not more than two. All right, so that's trig and functions. What about circle? You all know circles. What about unit? Any guesses on what type of a circle a unit circle would be? Radius of one. There we go, radius of one. So that comes from the word, so here's tri, which was three, uni, which is one. So one literally refers to one, the measurement of the radius. So we're going to use circles with a radius one for quite a while, and that's where unit circle comes from. So we're going to be measuring triangles. Uh, the triangles we're going to measure are right triangles. And unit, all you need to know, unit means one. Taking a science class, you use units for measurement. And they'll tell you what one, whatever unit you're working in. One foot, one pound, one ounce, whatever they're measuring in. So we'll start with uh, definitions. So our unit circle we're going to use is going to be centered at the origin. So we're going to have coordinate axes, x and y, and then draw your best unit circle. It doesn't need to be too big. That's pretty good and then draw one radius going up like that. So that's how we measure our angle theta. We measure always from the positive x-axis to wherever our angle's sitting. And this point right here is gonna have coordinates x, y, and it's on the unit circle. So let's write down some properties. What equation, so first of all, is this the graph of a function, the unit circle? No. No. What is it failing? Vertical line test. Vertical line test. So the one rule, if I input, for example, inputting x coordinate 0, I get two y coordinates out. So definitely not a function. However, this is a graph of an equation. So we graphed circles last quarter in pre-calculus 1. What would be the equation for this circle? And this has a radius 1. We can measure it. Put those down. Anybody remember? Definitely some x squareds. X minus h squared plus All right, this was, I believe we called this the standard form. This is basically the useful form. You can see the circle, uh, the center, and the radius right away. So our circle is centered at x coordinate 0, y coordinate 0. So h and k are both 0. And our radius needs to be 1. So our particular circle is going to be x minus 0 squared plus y minus 0 squared equals 1 squared. So our circle is x squared plus y squared equals 1. So here's our unit circle formula. So this is the equation of the unit circle. So 
So it turns out this relationship is very important. We'll see that. Uh, this is called the Pythagorean relationship, and we'll come back to this again and again. So let's start with our trig definitions. All right, so what you really need is these are the six trig functions. And they are going to input before all your functions input at x, pretty much, in pre-calculus one class. So now our input is going to be theta, and that's going to seem very different. So these are going to be trig functions of theta. So we'll start out with cosine. So cos theta, what that is, is the x-coordinate that we have on the unit circle there. So whatever x-coordinate, so there is some theta, whatever the x-coordinate is on the unit circle using that angle, that's cosine. Sine is the y-coordinate. Tan, or tangent of theta, is y over x. So anytime you're dividing, there could be a chance you divide by 0. So tangent, we're going to have to be a little careful with tangent. So those are the three basic ones. And the other three, I'll write to the right here. So this first one is secant theta, or sec theta, and that is going to be 1 over x. Cosecant theta, 1 over y. So you could pronounce sec, but you can't really pronounce csc. It would be a really weird word. So this is secant and cosecant. And the last one is cotangent, or cot theta. What does it mean when I draw a box around things? Memorize it. Memorize it. So you need to memorize these. I don't have a good way to memorize them, other than uh, just I do I always do cosine first because it's x. I always think of x first before I think of y. So I start out with cosine and then sine. Uh, actually, is that alphabetical? C comes before s, s before t. So they're alphabetically ordered as well, if that helps. What do you notice about cosine and secant? There's a reason I wrote them adjacent to each other. There. Yeah, so reciprocals is the nerd word we're looking for. So reciprocals, you could say it's the multiplicative inverse, but uh, we usually just use the word reciprocals for that. So they're, these three functions are the reciprocal functions. So a word I never write. Re uh, maybe that's how to spell it. These are the reciprocal functions. So first example, um, we could give this point a name. We can call it P for point. So we'll let P equal negative 1 half comma square root of 3 over 2. So first question, is P on the unit circle? And then part two, maybe we need a little more room. Part two. So find all trig functions of theta where theta Theta is the angle of P. And we'll graph this out so we'll see where this is. All right, so is P on the unit circle? How in the world do I answer that? What is the unit circle? So 
So it's all x, y values such that you square them, add them together, and equals 1. So this is on the unit circle if it satisfies the unit circle equation. So way back, last quarter, what is a graph? A graph is all points that satisfy an equation. So we're going to be on the graph if we satisfy the equation here with this point. So we're going to check, is this on the unit circle? We're going to check, does x squared plus y squared equal 1? All right, so go ahead and check that right now. These are pretty easy to square. You don't need calculators in this class. Square root 3 squared is regular 3. You should be able to handle 2 squared. So make sure when you're squaring negatives, you're going to get positive. So negative 1 half squared is positive 1 fourth. And 3 halves squared 3 over 2 squares out to 3 over 4. And you add that up, you get 1. So we're on the unit circle. So let's go ahead and do our best to graph this. Now, you might think, ah, oh, square root 3 over 2. Where in the world is that? So draw your best circle. Do you know where x coordinate negative 1 half is? Halfway out to 1. So that's pretty easy. So here's negative 1 half. Now there's two points on the unit circle that have this x coordinate. I'll draw them both. You got one on the top and one on the bottom. Which one do I, which one am I working with using P? How do you know it's the top point? Yep, positive square root 3 over 2. So if it was negative square root 3 over 2, I'd be using the bottom point I drew right there. So this top point right here is actually P. So we'll label that. We're going to draw the proper angle from the positive x-axis over to here. That's theta. So I want to write down all the trig functions of theta, where theta is the angle I just drew right here. So I'll start out with cosine theta. All right, what is cosine theta? And what is x? Negative 1 half. There we go. So all you're doing is picking out the x coordinate for cosine. All right, easy question. What is sine of theta? Square root 3 over 2. All right, so those are the easy ones. Now we're going to go for tangent. Tan is y divided by x, so our y is square root 3 over 2 divided by negative 1 half. So what did I tell you in pre-calculus 1 about fractions of fractions? So they're bad, they're dangerous, you have to know how they're grouped together. So I know how this one's grouped together, it's grouped like this. So I just wrote it down. So I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal of the denominator. So we have square root 3 over 2 multiplied by negative 2 over 1. So our 2's are going to cancel. We still get a negative. We get negative square root 3 over 1, which you can write as just negative square root 3. So there is cosine, sine, and tangent. So we're going to write out secant, cosecant, cotangent. These are going to be very easy once you have cosine, sine, and theta. So secant, cosecant, and cotangent. So all I'm doing is taking the reciprocal of everything I wrote down before. So reciprocal of negative 1 half, you could write as negative 2 ones, or you can just write negative 2. Reciprocal of square root 3 over 2 
is 2 over square root 3. And last up, cotangent is the reciprocal of tangent, so it's negative 1 over square root 3. Absolutely not. So that is common misconception. What do we call getting the square root out of the denominator? Rationalizing denominators, right? You're getting the irrational number out of there? All right, so it can be a useful exercise to do, but it's overall pretty useless. So I will do it for you in the blue pen. So I have a red pen for things that are wrong, but this is not wrong, it's just useless. So how do I rationalize? I can't square it, that's, that's illegal. There we go, so multiply by one special one, which is square root of 3 over square root of 3. Is it illegal to multiply by 1? Does that change anything? Nope. That's the only number you're allowed to multiply by and not change things. So square root of 3 times square root of 3 is regular 3. All right, so if I asked you, and according to all this, this is equal to 2 over square root of 3. So if I sent you to the store and asked you to get that many gallons of paint, would you be happier with 2 over square root 3 or 2 square root 3 over 3? Or would you not really be happy either way? Not happy either way. Uh, so I don't think that uh, rationalizing gives you anything useful. You still have a square root 3 that you have to deal with. Uh, you know, if you're going to the store to get paint, you would turn this into a decimal and probably round up and get that much paint. Uh, so. Now, why? So, rationalizing doesn't really get you anything good. Why is rationalizing a waste of time? So, let's look at. Uh, so, let's say you knew. So I'm going to go ahead and rationalize. So we already rationalized 2 over square root 3 somewhere. Let's say that you knew cosecant was 2 square root 3 over 3, and I wanted you to find, find sine theta. So you know sine theta is the reciprocal of cosecant. So I could write down, ah, oh, it's 3 over 2 square root 3, like that. But then if I'm a rationalizing person, what do I have to do next? I have to rationalize my denominator. So I go and square root 3, square root 3, and we get 3, square root 3, divided by 2, 3, uh, square root 3 times square root 3 is times another 3, and then I could cancel, and I finally have square root 3 over 2. All right. If I did not rationalize, I would have started right here with two, square root, 2 over square root 3. What is the reciprocal? Square root 3 over 2, and I'm already done. And you're multiplying by square roots. So you're going to waste your time if you rationalize. Plus, I will have to look, and when I grade, there will be lots of different equivalent answers that I'll have to look at. So it won't make me happy, and I'll waste your time. Good reason to not do it anymore. All right, so why did they make a big deal about it in high school? I don't know. That's why I don't go there anymore. There's probably some, somebody found it useful somewhere, uh, but it's pretty useless, so don't do it. Uh, and I still will punish you if you make a mistake. I'll take a point off if you rationalize wrong, cause, mainly because I told you not to do it. So if you do it and you do it incorrect, I usually take about one point off. Okay, web work doesn't care if you're rationalized or not. Web work just wants square root of 3 over 2 or whatever it happens to be. Doesn't, you don't need to rationalize at all. 
So there are four very nice points on the unit circle. And I will draw the first very nice point. Now I say nice because you pretty much instantly know their coordinates or their trig values. All right, first point is one zero. That's a really nice point. I didn't have to burn too many brain cells to come up with those coordinates. What's the next easy point you know is on the unit circle? Negative one zero. Very good. That's going to be right here. All right, there's two more easy points. Zero, negative one down here. So don't go any X and go negative one Y. And what's the last point? Zero, positive one. So these are the easy points on the unit circle. You don't need to use any memorization to know these points. You just need to know how coordinate systems work. So I want to find th the three. So when I just write three trig functions, I just mean the first three, cosine, sine, and tangent. So we're mainly going to focus on cosine, sine, and tangent, because if you know those, you can just take the reciprocal, and you're going to have the other three. So if you focus on those, the other three are very easy. Just take the reciprocals. All right, pi. So if your brain's still working in degrees, what is pi radians in degrees? 180. So you can think of this as 180, or you think a full rotation is 2 pi. So I got half of a full rotation. So pi is 1 half of a rotation. So it's pretty easy to draw where that angle is. It's right here. That angle is pi. So do a half rotation. So I want you to tell me cosine, sine, and tangent of pi. You may need to flip back one page if you forgot cosine, sine, and tangent. I know we just learned them. Uh, somewhere they're up in this box right here. Cosine, sine, and tangent. That's why I draw a big box so you can very easily flip back and look and see where your box is. It takes five seconds. So you should have got negative one for cos, zero for sine, and zero for tangent. What points do you use? Yeah, I'm super confused. Which points do you use? How do you know which points do you use to get that negative one, zero? So I'm using this angle right here, pi. So this is the point that I'm using right there. What I'm doing is probably too simple, and your brain is working harder than it should be. I'm, I'm using this, this angle the half rotation, which gives me this point, and I'm just picking out the x is cosine, the y is sine, and the tangent is the y over the x. Okay, so that's why we picked that point, not 1 over 0. Yeah, if I would have said, uh, I could have picked a different angle, uh, for example, pi over 2, I would have been focused on the top point. Okay. And 3 pi over 2 will be on the bottom. All right, so I'm not doing anything more than just picking out the x-coordinate, then the y-coordinate, and then for tangent, I'm just dividing the y by the x. That's all. So this is, I'm really just uh, writing down what follows from the definitions that we had. So we haven't, we're not really doing any actual. Um, You're walking like a three-legged dog, so like you can't flow that fast. OK. So we're about to do some geometry and crank it up a little bit. So we're going to be using some uh, flashback geometry skills. All right, so any of these four points are very easy to tell me cosine and sine and tangent. So we're about to move into the ones that are not so easy. 
uh, and we'll draw the full unit circle and label everything on there at the end after we do these uh, three angles here. So who took geometry at some point in high school or middle school? All right, so almost all of you, excellent. So if not, um, I might say some things that other people understand and you'll just have to be like, yeah, it's probably true. Like we'll be looking at things like similar triangles and corresponding parts of triangles and all that fun stuff. So we're gonna use uh, pi over four. So I wanna find our three trig values of theta equals pi over four. So first of all, where is pi over four? So we saw right up here, pi was a half a rotation. So let's think back to, uh, we can go to two pi is one rotation. What do I have to multiply to get uh, pi over four on the left? One eighth. So I'm going to multiply by an eighth. So that'll give us two over eight is one fourth. So that's pi over four is one eighth of a rotation. Now an eighth of a rotation might seem kind of small. So let's draw our unit circle. Now just drawing your unit circle, you basically broke it up into four pieces already by drawing your unit circle. So how far do I want to go? I don't want to go all the way uh, up to that y-axis. That would be a quarter or a fourth. I want to go halfway up to the y-axis. So exactly halfway. So draw your best halfway angle right there. And then we're going to have pi over uh, 4 here is our angle. So it's my goal to figure out what x and y value are going to be right there. So what we're going to do is draw triangles. So we're going to draw one very specific triangle. And it's very important how you draw it. You're always going to draw your triangle going to the x-axis with a right angle to the x-axis. So I'll write that down. You're going to draw a triangle from our point. Usually we call it a P above from point P perpendicular to the x-axis. So there's only one way to draw a perpendicular line from P going through the x-axis. And that is a vertical line going straight down. So the line we're going to draw, do a dotted line, is right there. And I'm going to draw the uh, right angle mark inside. So right now you should feel that this triangle is way too small for what we're trying to do. So we're about to draw a really big version so we can draw it right all over it. So I'm going to redraw this triangle way bigger. So we've got pi over 4 there. At the angle, we have a right angle here. Now, <clears throat> which side is x and which side is y? So think about what x measured before. So did x correspond to this side at the bottom? Is that the x side or is the vertical side the x side? Bottom. bottom. The horizontal side will be x. And the vertical side is going to be y. I do know one measurement. What is the measurement of this diagonal side on my triangle? 1. How do I know that that's 1? It's a unit circle, and this side is basically the radius right there. So that's going to be 1. All right, so we got 1 from the fact that we're on the unit circle, and x and a y right here. So we need to use some geometry now. This uh, is a triangle, and what do we know about angle sum in a triangle? Mm 
180. So angle sum in a triangle is 180. And what was that 180 pi? 180 what? Degrees, the opposite of today's temperature. All right, 180. What about in, so we're measuring in radians. So what is our angle sum in radians? Just regular pi. All right, so we're going to add up all the angles and get pi. So we have a right angle. So a right angle right there. How much is a right angle? So a right angle is 90, which will be pi over 2. So there's pi over 2. So how do I know that? So we'll look at a right angle here. Ninety degrees. So red angle is ninety degrees. Uh, we know one eighty equals pi. So all I need to do is cut it in half. So one half pi is ninety degrees. There's our right angle. So red angle is one half pi or pi over two. So add these two angles together. We're going to have a third angle. I don't want to call it theta. So I'm going to use another Greek letter called phi, which looks like a sideways theta. So it looks like a zero with a vertical line through it. <coughs> so we have pi over 4 plus pi over 2 plus phi equals pi. So if we add up all three angles in our triangle, we better get pi. All right, pi over 4 plus pi over 2 is 3 pi over 4. And pi is 4 pi over 4. So what is phi? It, it will end up, yes, being the same, the same angle. All right, so we're in common denominators, so these fractions are easy. Five or four, yes. So remember, fractions only suck if you're not in common denominator. If you have common denominators, fractions are not so bad. All right, so what a coincidence. We have another pi over four angle right here. So what special name did this triangle get? It is a special. It's kind of pretty. Two sides are the same. Isosceles. There we go. So isosceles may ring a bell. This is an isosceles right triangle. I think you're thinking of, I want to say scalene. Maybe there's scalene is a non right triangle, I think. And there's a two centripetal or two classifications of scalene. Mm -hmm. They make a big deal about how all shapes are classified. All right, so this is an isosceles triangle. I'll try to spell that word, and then you can laugh. I think it's just isoles, but there's probably some other letters missing. Isosceles means. Now, two angles are equal, that also makes two sides equal. So that's the other property that these triangles have. Now, when I say you have to trust me, we're not going to go through why the angles being equal make the sides equal. This is a geometry fact we're going to use. All right, so that means x equals y. So I'm going to redraw my triangle. That's not the best line. Mm -hmm. 
All right. What theorem relates these three sides together? Pythagorean theorem. X squared plus X squared equals 1 squared. So Pythagorean theorem is probably one of the few things you learn that's still useful in math. Hopefully you remembered algebra as well. That's very useful also. All right, so we're going to use Pythagorean theorem and solve for x using algebra tomorrow.